There are faces in the human fossil record that seem to belong to another world entirely, faces that do not resemble modern humanity so much as they resemble the great Ice Age predators that once stalked the same landscapes. Among them, the skulls of Petrolona from Europe and Cabwe from Southern Africa stand out as representatives of a robust, archaic facial architecture, optimized not for social display or delicate communication, but for survival, stealth, and the brutal intimacy of close-range hunting. Their massive and heavy faces are even more simian in appearance than the Neanderthal, with enormous inflated brow ridges that are notably conspicuous and extended, particularly at the lateral angles. Their skulls possess a combination of features that together form a single integrated predatory system. A low, sloping forehead, high-set, deep-recessed eye sockets, large orbits capable of supporting big, light-sensitive eyes, and possibly lighter-coloured irises that would have glimmered not with human expressiveness but with the cold efficiency seen in snow leopards and wolves. These were hominins who lived in dim forests, cold twilight and dangerous environments where hunting meant closing distance, tracking silently and striking at close quarters. Their faces reveal not weakness or primitiveness, but design, an adaptation to the ecological demands of a predatory life. The story begins with the forehead, or more precisely the lack of the high vertical frontal bone that characterizes Homo sapiens. Petrolona's forehead does not rise vertically. It sweeps backward in a long slope, giving way to a massive brow ridge that overhangs the orbits. Cowboy's forehead is similarly low, with a heavy superorbital region that shades the eyes. Modern people often interpret this slope as a primitive trait, but in functional terms it is anything but. A tall, vertical forehead like ours is reflective. Despite living on different continents, these hominins have very similar skull morphology, suggesting a successful hominin migrating into Africa from Europe. In a snowy forest or rocky ravine, the light that catches a modern human's forehead reveals their presence instantly. A sloping forehead absorbs and deflects light, reducing the vertical silhouette of the head and allowing the face to merge into shadow. A hunter with a backward-tilted upper face is harder to detect in dim conditions. Thus, the low forehead is not a handicap, but a form of natural camouflage. Humans today instinctively lower their eyebrows and tilt their heads when prowling. Neanderthals had anatomy optimized for this posture. Homo sapiens eventually abandoned the close-quarter predatory niche that shaped Neanderthal facial architecture. As our ancestors shifted toward long-distance hunting, first with light javelins, then the atlatl, and finally the bow and arrow, the evolutionary pressure for stealthy, shadowed, close-range facial concealment disappeared. We no longer needed deep-set eyes tucked under massive brow ridges because we no longer had to approach prey within meters. Instead, our faces adapted to a different kind of survival, larger, more globular brains pushing the forehead upward, increased frontal lobe expansion for planning, language, and long-range coordination, and mobile eyebrows suited for social signaling across distance. Neanderthals evolved the anatomy of an ambush predator. Homo sapiens evolved the anatomy of a strategist, communicator, and long-range hunter. Beneath that sloping frontal bone sit the high-set eyes, an extraordinary feature of these archaic skulls. In Petrolona, the eyes are positioned higher on the face than in modern humans. This shift has profound implications for hunting and movement. Eyes positioned high on the skull provide a steeper downward viewing angle, ideal for scanning terrain, judging distances, and navigating obstacles in rough landscapes. A hunter moving over broken ground needs to know where to place each foot without lifting the head too much, and higher eyes allow exactly that. They also help when stalking prey from above or through cover, enabling the hunter to see more without exposing the whole head. Even more crucial is the depth of the eye sockets. The eyes of these hominins were not simply higher. They were deeply recessed, buried beneath thick orbital roofs that formed protective hoods. In Petrolona, the orbits are particularly shadowed, giving the impression of eyes set far back in the skull, sheltered from impact and glare. Cabway's orbits are even larger and rounder, 
shaped like protective domes, built to house eyes adapted for gathering as much light as possible. Deep-set eyes hide the sclera from detection and reduce reflective glints. A prey animal looking towards a predator is most likely to spot the bright flash of the eye whites, but when the eyes are deep beneath bone hidden in shadow, that flash disappears. The hunter can look without revealing themselves. Combined with this recessing is the extraordinary size of the orbits. Both Petrolona and Cabwe show large, broad orbital openings, 20% larger than those of modern humans. Larger openings mean larger eyes, and larger eyes can gather more available light. In twilight or under dense canopy, the ability to see movement, subtle shifts in shadow, or the flick of a tail is everything. Big eyes do not only help in darkness, they sharpen contrast and enhance depth perception in complex environments. Many of the world's most efficient predators, especially those that hunt at dawn or dusk, have enlarged eyes to maximize crepuscular vision. The hominins represented by Petrolona and Cabwe likely shared that predatory advantage. This raises the question, what color were their eyes? While pigmentation cannot be read from bone alone, the morphology suggests the possibility of lighter irises in snowy northern environments. If one imagines the eyes of Petrolona not as dark hollows, but as pale amber or grey-green like those of a snow leopard, the entire structure takes on a new, functional significance. Light erides enhance low-light sensitivity by scattering internal light and improving contrast in dim conditions. They also reduce glare against snowy backgrounds and in deep shadows light irises, when set far back beneath a protruding brow, can appear almost dark, their reflectivity muted. This combination provides both sensitivity and concealment, the same dual advantage exploited by Ice Age predators with pale-eyed adaptations. The archaic hominin face, with its architecture of shadow and bone, could easily house eyes suited for this ecological niche. From this foundation of low forehead and predatory eyes, the rest of the facial architecture takes shape with equal purposefulness. Both Petrolona and Cabwe exhibit a massive brow ridge, a single continuous bar of bone that spans the entire upper face. Modern humans read emotions in the eyebrows, but these archaic hominins communicated through different channels. Their brow ridge is not a surface for expression. It is a structural visor that shades the eyes and protects them from debris, branches or blows during the hunt. It creates a roof that covers the eyes like a helmet does for a soldier. In both skulls, the brow ridge is deeply grooved and reinforced, reflecting powerful musculature anchoring the face. Its functional shape directs rain and snow away, reduces glare from above and adds to the shadow mask concealing the eyes. Even the shape of the skull behind the face, the posterior cranium, plays a role in predatory specialization. Petrolona exhibits a pronounced occipital torus, and Cabwe has similarly reinforced cranial walls. This suggests powerful neck musculature. A predator that grapples with large animals benefits from a strong neck capable of steadying the head during impact or sudden movement. The skull base and nuchal area in these fossils indicate that the head was stabilized during dynamic activity, either rushing forward, holding position, or absorbing stress from above. The entire facial complex of these archaic humans forms a single system, eyes set high and deep for stealth and vision, brow ridges that function as natural visors, noses built for rapid oxygen intake, cheekbones shaped to dissipate force, jaws designed for gripping and endurance, and a forehead angled to conceal, not reveal. This is not a social face, not a communicative face, and certainly not a primitive face. It is a face engineered by evolution for predation. Consider how such a face would operate in the landscapes these hominins inhabited. The Petrolona individual may have stalked game through the cold forests of Pleistocene Greece, where winter nights were long and much of the year was dim and overcast. The Cabwe individual lived on the edges of wooded savannas, where the contrast between shadow and light made detection a constant risk. In both habitats, silence and concealment mattered more than long-distance strategy. These hominins did not throw long-range projectiles. They used thrusting weapons, clubs or stone tools at close range. They approached their prey within meters, often from behind cover. The predatory face helped them survive that approach. 
Imagine Petralona crouched behind a limestone boulder at twilight, snow filtering through the trees. His forehead slopes back, absorbing the remaining light. His deep-set eyes collect every shimmer of movement. The prey cannot see the whites of his eyes. The shadow hides them. The cold air he breathes enters through a vast nasal chamber, warming instantly as he prepares to leap forward. The brow ridge protects his eyes as he pushes through branches and rock. His cheekbones and jaws brace against the tension of holding a stone-tipped spear. When he moves, he does so with the confidence of a creature whose face is armoured for the blow. Cowboy, too, would have stalked prey under challenging conditions. His large, rounded orbits hint at superior low-light perception, essential for dawn and dusk hunting. The broad mid-face and thick palate suggest that he could breathe heavily while running short distances lungs and nose cooperating in muscular harmony. Eyes hidden beneath the massive brow ridge would reflect little light. His face would appear shadowed even at midday, blending into the dim edges of woodland. The prey that noticed him would have only a second to react before the hunter was upon it. Petrolona and Cowboy Man could likely kill at a distance using short-range throwing spears, but they hunted to the extreme. The most common method of killing animals was direct contact with the victim. Hunters would jab long, thick spears directly into the flesh of prey, such as mammoths, and contrary to popular myth, they often hunted the largest, most dangerous animals rather than hunting the old and weak, as other predators do. These hominins were characterized not only by peculiar biomechanical adaptations, but also by a specific hormonal condition which has no close parallels among modern human hormonal conditions, either normal or pathological. In other words, these hominins were heavily pumped up on male hormones, possessing a hormonal status unlike anything seen in humans today. This condition may have evolved as a result of inherited genes, life in an often cold northern climate, and an almost all-meat diet. It is easy for modern observers accustomed to flat faces, arched brows, and high foreheads, to misinterpret these archaic features as crude. But the Petrolona and Cowboy skulls do not represent failed experiments or evolutionary dead ends. They represent specialized hominins adapted to dangerous ecological niches where predatory efficiency was the highest priority. Their faces speak of a world where survival depended not on social cohesion or symbolic communication, but on the ability to see in darkness, breathe under stress, remain hidden, and endure physical force. In this light, the differences between archaic hunters like Petrolona and Carbway and modern humans become revealing. Our faces are expressive and vulnerable. Our high foreheads expose us. Our shallow orbits reveal our eye movements. Our smaller noses limit the speed of cold air intake. Our delicate jaws break under pressure they would have endured effortlessly. We traded predatory anatomy for social intelligence and long-distance technology. They evolved in a world where the body itself had to be the weapon. Thus, when one examines the fossil faces of Petrolona and Cabue, one should not see primitiveness. One should see specialization, faces shaped by shadow, bone, muscle, and the demands of predation. These were hunters optimized for stealth and low-light pursuit, hominins whose skulls reflect the harsh beauty of the world they mastered. The sloping forehead, higher set eyes, shadowed orbits, vast nasal passages, and powerful jaws together form an architecture of survival. They stand as reminders that human evolution was not a straight line toward modernity, but a complex branching of adaptations, each finely tuned to a particular environment. Petrolona and Cabwe were not failed versions of us. They were masters of their world, super predators whose faces were instruments of their success. Thanks for watching.